thank you for sticking around and watching my videos. I hope you find them at least somewhat interesting. And um, it's been uh, quite enjoyable to do like these. Um, but let's cut to the chase. First, uh, disclaimer, I'm not a psychologist and I'm not a dietitian or a nutritionist. I've never thoroughly learned about eating disorders. Uh, so this is just my story and my perspective and uh, how it was for me. And I'm making this video because I want it, um, um, well, mostly because of awareness and because I don't feel bad about making it. And um, just to say that I, I know for a fact that there are quite a lot of other uh, people uh, athletes and non-athletes who struggle with the same stuff that I did and um, and I just wanted to share my uh, my story so that maybe some people can even find some uh, inspiration or uh, a way to heal themselves from their own issues with food <laughs> so let's get into it uh, so my um, bulimia and binge eating started at the age of 15 and I stopped at the age of 22, 23 gradually. Uh, today I've been clean, uh, quite. I don't know exactly, but I have been clean quite, quite a while. And uh, um, the, my, I can't just say what it was like to be a bulimic, but I, my story has very many different phases when it was worse, when it was better. And it all is connected to how, I, how I'm doing in life. Um, and therefore I decided to share uh, a few glimpses about when it was bad and when I thought it was a little bit better and and how it all ended up being. Uh, like I said, I started doing this when I was 15 years old. Um, why I started doing this was mainly because I was getting a little too heavy for a figure skater and I mean it for a figure skater in in normal life i was always underweight when I, even if i was too heavy i was always underweight but that's the reality of figure skating that to be able to do all the triple jumps depending on your uh, physics and your um like the way you're built and what you have na by nature you have to be super light and um i have very good physique for a figure skater uh, but I was not ready to be growing into a woman, like I said in the other episode. And um, I never, this was not like a long discussion with my brain that should I start doing it or not. It was just like a trigger. And what triggered me was, sorry, I thought there was someone. What triggered me was, um, first of all, it was the mainly the people around me. I had seen people throw up their food i had seen anorexic people and i had heard people even tell me that maybe i should start doing this to um be able i don't know if that was a joke or not but to be able to maintain my weight and not feel bad about eating and it started off very easy and simple i just decided that i'll try it it didn't work at first but i kept trying and then um, somehow I realized like, oh, I just threw up my whole lunch and I feel good and I'm light and I had a perfect training and uh, what's, what's wrong with this? And uh, at the time I would obviously not Google what are the side effects, I'm a teenager, like you, you just don't do it. I would do it now, but back then I all I thought about was figure skating and, uh, and that's pretty crazy, but yeah. Um, and basically from there on, I was happily maintaining my weight. I could eat whatever I wanted and just like throw it up afterwards or go run very long distance and wear uh, plastic around my legs for sweating. And all of this started. Uh, besides bulimia and binge eating, I would eat laxatives. That's what makes you do a number two in the bathroom and also uh, water pills, which actually came later and I will tell you why, but also water pills, which make you um, 
which you take a water pill in, in two hours after basically you you just like pee like a uh, five gallons of water and you're like 10 pounds light, like i think my maximum was four pounds lighter in two hours um and um and basically from the ages of 15 to 18 uh i was doing this then i had moved to ice dance and i had moved to michigan and uh, uh i wanted to bring out one example because michigan was i think the worst time for my disease it was uh well first of all i was not happy in michigan in general i uh, i didn't realize it at the time but i was really not fully enjoying my life there and it was my first time in the states and there were so many temptations around me and at the time i was also i was in a good shape but uh, i had this consciously i knew that i had to be lighter because I was skating with a partner and you would get lifted all the time um, and that lead me to think that I'm too heavy, I'm too heavy and that just triggered another very horrible period for me where I would just eat so much junk food and in a very short period of time and then just go to the bathroom and throw it up and why this is bad is because binge eating is uh, if you research it now, you will find a lot of articles about girls or boys who have died because of binge eating. And what happens is that your rib cracks. And I also remember a few times when, when I was throwing up, first of all, my heart rate went really high because it was like my body was working so hard to push everything back up that I had just forced down. And, uh, and afterwards, I would just feel like... Um, like all the energy from my body was gone and I was just laying there in bed and and that was it was tough and I still did, had not told anyone about this I really did not think it was anyone's business and um, also at the time there were it was at least one maybe even two rumors going on about me that someone heard me possibly in the bathroom and um, they uh, they would start a rumor that Joe is bulimic. And and the crazy thing is that still at the time when I had already done it for five years, I still did not, uh, what's the word, um, tell myself that yes, I'm bulimic. I still didn't see it that way. I couldn't uh, come to t terms with that. And I would, worst of all, I would deny it when it came up and just lie to everyone and lie to myself because I did not realize that they're talking about me. I or all, all I thought was that I'm in a good shape and and this is my way of keeping myself in shape. I just need to not tell anyone about it. And that's just messed up, you know, like the way our brain can just be rewired this way and and it can actually like feed you with all these lies that yes, this is okay and you don't have to worry about this. Um, and, uh, yeah, that was it. And fasting forward, fast forward a little bit again, I'm back in single skating and, um, how my disease had evolved by then was that in single skating, when I came back to freestyle, I was at my best, I was 51 kilos and at my worst, I was 55, 56. And my perfect weight was like 53, 52. That was what I tried to maintain. And um, I was throwing up less because I was eating less. So my disease had evolved into something maybe more mature. I don't think, it, I don't know if that's okay to say, but uh, I had, um, I had like a routine. So my routine was that I was skating every morning at seven. So I wake up between, between five six i would eat snickers or whatever type of sweet bar that i wanted in the morning when i was heading to the rink then i would go train do my first training after first training i would weigh and only then i would drink water or like a and the fresh juice or a smoothie then second training break had my lunch which was like buckwheat vegetables meat or fish it was actually like a healthy food 
but I was still so hooked and so automatically throwing up everything. So even though I was eating healthy, I was still throwing it up. And that really led me to lose even more weight. And, and it got so, uh, and I got so obsessed in this that I even, I was take eating laxatives. Um, those I was mostly eating during competitions to be lighter the next day of the competition. Um, and they would really help me like get rid of whatever toxins there were in my body, but um, but they would make my stomach hurt really bad. And I even went to the hospital once for very bad stomach pain. I don't remember when that was, but I know I went to the hospital. I had like um, so-called um, burning pains. I don't know what, what is the exact term, but this is what I had. And um, another thing that I, found for myself was water pills and water pills like i said they get rid of all the excess water you have and the only issue with those was that i was my lips were so dry and i felt so dry afterwards but i would eat water pills also during competitions to be as light as possible and with like laxatives be water pills and throwing up i did um, I could not do this on a daily basis because you just don't have enough energy. But during competitions, it was fine because you have the adrenaline and your competition is way shorter than like a full training day. Uh, so that was my kind of a routine. And the crazy thing is that I managed to keep it all a secret this whole time, even when I had like people in the room with me I would go to the bathroom and they sometimes didn't realize or what what is even worse um, is that they they realized but they didn't do anything about it and uh, that's another reason I'm making this video is that I'm sharing this with you and I hope that someone who has the same issues is watching this and realizes that yes we did like either we did or we do have mental diseases and uh, we need to deal with them ASAP. Like I said, I am clean now and I will make another video about how I managed to do this. But um, basically the main thing about all of this is that it starts when you don't feel confident in your body and when you don't have anyone to turn to with your insecurity issues and normally you don't want to even turn to anyone so it's very important that the people around you um, know this that they have to turn to you and try to help you in order to not let you go on a bad road that might end up with you even being dead or like not being able to have kids one day or whatever other issues um, maybe even like other substance um, abuse problems um, and and it's very very it's a tricky disease because you don't even realize while you're doing it that this is what you're doing and your brain doesn't at least I'm talking from my own perspective and my brain just didn't tell me to stop ever there were a few times when I was like, when I was either very dizzy afterwards and I was telling myself that I, I don't think I should be doing this, but it never really uh, made me in, made me realize that, yes, I actually have to stop doing it. So it was just like a, like a side note, uh, side note, Joe, you should not be throwing up your food. <laughs> but, uh, and even to this day, I don't, understand how I was able to do all those heavy trainings with what I was doing at home and I, I guess that's just how wonderful and powerful our bodies are when we really 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 want something to happen in our lives and um, yeah so that was what it was like to be a figure skater with an eating disorder and uh, I hope you share and you spread this word with others who you think might have the same issues and I hope um, this uh, brought some awareness into this whole topic and I hope you stick around for 
episode three of my figure skating story and also part two in my eating disorder story. Thank you.